Over the last 30 years, Japan has had major innovations in automotives, electronics, fashion, television, and above all, video games. Some of the greatest games we've ever played have come from the land of the rising sun. Although I am grateful for Street Fighter, Mario, and Final Fantasy, I am just as equally deeply disturbed and confused by the other games they produce. Some of the games that come out of Japan are ultra weird, extremely pervy, and downright disgusting. I was going to do a top 5 video, but damn it, there were too many to choose from. So today, we take a look at the top 10 weirdest Japanese video games. I'm not going to ease you into this list. I'm coming at you fast and hard with Akiba's Trip. Undead and Undressed. This is a third-person beat-em-up set in the Akihabara district of Tokyo. Your task is to rid the city of Synthesters, aka vampires that can exist in sunlight just as long as they have their clothes on. So what you need to do is beat the crap out of them in the middle of the street while stripping their clothes off so they can be burnt to a crisp. But be careful, you're also a Synthester. So if you get beaten up enough, your clothes will be stripped away and you too will perish in the sun's penetrating blades. How do you know who's a Synthester? <laughs> Easy. Pop out your camera phone and look through the viewfinder. If they get all glitchy, you got one. Run over there, knock them in the head, and strip them naked until they get the ultimate sunburn. Incredible Crisis came out on the PlayStation back in 2000. You play as four members of a Japanese family as they go on wacky adventures in order to get a birthday present for grandma. The first thing you have to do in the game is to join a spontaneous dance routine at work. Once complete, you have to dodge a giant boulder, balance on a flagpole, and answer a series of questions in the back of an ambulance. And that's just the first 10 minutes, folks. On one part, you have to snowboard down a mountain while being chased by gun-toting wolves. In another part, a young man reading a comic book sees a Goliath-sized pink teddy bear and gets zapped by said teddy bear, shrinking him down to a miniature size. This one is just weird, folks. The only thing that I liked about the game was its amazing soundtrack. It sounded like it was inspired by the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, but upon further research, it actually features the music of Tokyo Ska Paradise Orchestra. Sweet. Oh boy, now we're getting borderline pervy. Gal Gun is a shooter that just permeates creeper status to a maximum level. Basically, you're a dude that just got shot with too many of Cupid's arrows and now you're the most popular boy in school. Your very presence makes you utterly irresistible to the opposite sex, and you need to find a way to fend off these marauding teenage girls. They don't allow guns in school, so the only way to stop the onslaught is to blast them with what's called pheromone shots. With enough pumps, the girls will fall to their knees in pure ecstasy, buckling under the force of your cute boy essence. The people who made the game knew it was a bit filthy with all the erotic sounds and the squirting going on, so they implemented a failsafe. If your mom rushes in to see what naughty game you're playing, just hit the panic button. It will transform the game into a retro-looking 8-bit RPG. The developers actually named this function as the Mom Arrived Screen. Okay, let's go from the super perverted into the super bizarre. Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tung Nu is an extremely weird game. You play as a boy named Rin. You discover that your soul was stolen by the island of Tung Nu, and if you don't get it back, you'll weaken and eventually die in emptiness. Your friend Yashiro gives you a temporary soul that only lasts for 49 days. When you get to the island, you encounter a giant green human head floating in darkness. At this point, you have to enter the head through one of its orifices. The main goal of the game is to have Rin die and be reincarnated nine times, fulfilling the purpose of each life. But in all honesty, the game is so devoid of logic and reasoning that the main purpose is left up to the player's imagination, if he or she dared to play this one. Now, let's get into a Japanese game that's two part sinister, one part humorous. Tecmo Koei's Deception series has been around since the mid 90s and has been freaking out gamers ever since. But let's talk about the latest installment, Deception 4 Blood Ties. This is a quote unquote strategy game that allows you to place traps in various areas of a school, including the gymnasium and the playground. Unsuspecting victims will fall into these devious traps, screaming in agony. Some players describe it as erotic pain. If you're able to chain different traps together, the higher 
the combo. The more elaborate and humiliating the torture, the higher the points. But why are you doing this? Well, it turns out you're the daughter of Satan himself. In order to free him from his sealed portal of doom, you have to torture the descendants of scripture-reading monks that imprisoned him 3,000 years ago. Makes sense, right? Anytime a game starts off with a kid dropping a deuce in a toilet, you know it's going to be a crappy game. Toilet Kids was a Japanese game released back in 1992. It was a vertical scrolling shooter that's basically the old 1942 game, but instead of shooting at enemy aircraft, you're shooting at golden turds and fecal flinging frogs. In the first stage alone, you have farting beetles, a mosquito that blows snot bubbles at you, and male genitalia shaped spaceships that urinate at you. Oh my god, I mean, one of the bosses is a helicopter with an ass for the cockpit for crying out loud. If you're lucky enough to make it past the giant coiled ropes of Egypt, you'll be facing against King Turd himself in a fight to the finish. After you defeated the foe, the god of underpants appears and grants you the gift of, well, underpants, so you don't have to wear diapers anymore. This game stinks. Gitaru Man was a PlayStation rhythm-based video game released in 2001. Some people would describe it as a weird mix of Parappa the Rappa and Guitar Hero. The main character's name is U1, which is a pretty awesome name, and your dog named Puma has the ability to talk and he tells you that you're actually the last known hero of Planet Gitaru. A demon shows up in your room and your dog turns you into a Gitaru Man? Then you go through all the different levels defeating the bosses with your rock and roll string plucking powers. On the surface, it sounds like an endearing story of a one-time loner teen who overcomes all odds and falls in love with his crush. But I think the dude just took too many acid pills. I mean, seriously, a talking dog that turns you into a guitar playing hero? This guy's psychotic. Super Galdelic Hour is a man-child's idea of an awesome game. You can play as one of the QTs, small robotic animal-like Teletubbies that transform into scantily clad, well-endowed women to compete in a variety of different minigames because perverts. Each game is obviously designed to make them jiggle as much as possible. Whack-a-mole, get screwed, or booty bounce. What's surprising is that this game was made by Enix, the same folks that brought us Tomb Raider 3 and those awesome Dragon Quest games on the Super Nintendo. How dare they make such a smutty game, and how dare I look at those bouncing, bountiful, voluptuous boobies. I feel ashamed. I'm Sorry, the video game was a Japanese arcade game released in 1985 that featured a caricature of former Japanese Prime Minister Kakoi Tanaka. You have to collect as many gold bars as you can before time runs out. The different enemies you encounter include Japanese comedian Tamori, former Olympian Carl Lewis, and pop icons Michael Jackson and Madonna. Uh, say what now? If you get caught by Tamori, your clothes will change into a white diaper while he changes into a leather S&M bikini, and he lashes his whip on your back while you cry. The game is a satire about Tanaka Tanaka's corrupt behavior as Prime Minister of Japan, which included taking $1.8 million in bribe money from a US-based aerospace company. The title of the game is actually a play on the Japanese word for Prime Minister, Sori. They should retitle this, I'm sorry this is a video game. If random, homoerotic, half-naked bodybuilders flying through the sky shooting semi-automatic weapons is your thing, then you need to check out Sho Aniki. The main premise of the game is to defeat Bo Emperor Bill. He invades all neighboring star systems to replenish his supply of protein. It's the only game where a balding man with a robotic penis can shoot another man at you with his anus. Also, after defeating the bosses, the cutscenes make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Every now and then, some bald dude will pop up and spout some BS. The final boss is a giant dude trying to fist you right before he protrudes his humongous ass and passes gas at you. This game is ultra weird. There's no explanation for this type of tomfoolery. Cho Aniki translates to Super Big Brother, and in Japan, it's a part of a subgenre of games called Bakagi, which literally translates to idiot game. So I guess the joke's on us. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a thumbs up. And also, subscribe to Arcade Cloud for more Top 5. Uh, top 10? 
for more of these videos.